Hello there amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new Doctor Who face-off and this one is round two where I'm, in this round we're going to be facing off between the sixth Doctor and the twelfth Doctor aka Colin Baker and Peter Capaldi. Now Peter Capaldi is of course my favourite modern Doctor Who incarnation of the Doctor. I absolutely love Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Now, Colin Baker, on the other hand, he's got some good stories in his run. Now, the one thing about these two Doctors, I have to say, they were treated really badly by the scripts, really. Now, luckily, Colin Baker's had a load of work done by Big Finish, pump, pump, uh, pumping up his Doctor through there. Which, to be honest with you, I've only listened to, like, what? I've got the last, the Six Doctors Last Adventure. I've got the Juggernauts. I've got the First Santaran. And I've got the Canite Curse. And the Six Doctor has really became a really good favourite of mine in Big Finish. Not as much as Paul McGann, because i kind of got a load of Paul McGann. I mean, all this lot here, as you can see, that is all my Paul McGanns. And at the moment, I am listening to Dark Eyes 3. I absolutely do like Paul McGann, but Colin Baker's Doctor has had a load of stuff done to his Doctor during Big Finish. Now, Peter Capaldi, on the other hand, has only had one Doctor Who show in it, aka Stephen Moffat. That's the one thing about this, these two Doctors. I mean, Colin Baker still had John Nathan Turner. Peter Capaldi had Stephen Moffat, who basically ran the 11th Doctor, where John Nathan Turner ran... The final season of the fourth Doctor, the whole run of the fifth Doctor, and he has the sixth Doctor, and of course the seventh Doctor after. Now, during Colin Baker's run as the Doctor, Doctor Who was put onto an 80th month suspension by an idiot known as Michael Grading, who is the biggest twat the BBC has ever had. And I'm sorry to say that, but he was. He put Doctor Who on an 18 month suspension. What the hell was he thinking? Thank God for Russell T. Davis and the rest of the crew of the BBC bringing it back in 2005. But anyway, Michael Grading was still a bit of an idiot for counselling Doctor Who. And Colleen Baker's Doctor suffers during this kind of era. I mean, we have the twin dilemma for his Doctor where he literally strangles Perry. We've got Attack of the Summer, which is a good summer story. And it's very, very gruesome. We literally when the summer crush Lytton's hands. We have Ventures on Varos, again, which is a fantastic Doctor Who story. Very horrific as well, with some scenes, with in, like including an acid bath. We also have the Market Irani, the Two Doctors, Time Left, Revolution of the Dikes. And, of course, all four stories of Trial of a Time Lord, basically, which is the Mysterious Planet, Ultimate Foe. Mysterious Planet, Mind Warp, Ultimate... Yeah, we've got... Sorry, Ultimate Foe is another part of it. So we have Ultimate Foe, the final episode. We've got the Mysterious Planet, Mind Warp, Tale of the Vervoise, and Ultimate Foe, which is the fantastic box that I do like to see. I do like season 23 and season 22. I like every single season of Doctor Who, but there are some seasons I'm like, ee, ee, not so much. But the thing is, though, the one, why have I put these two Doctors in a face off each other? Now, these two Doctors seem very similar to me, and I don't know what it is because. In series 8 for Capaldi, the 8th Doctor is very brational. He's very a bit of a douche, really. Especially in the early episodes where he's there talking to Clara and he goes, she, she's my carer, she cares, so I don't have to. I can imagine Colin Baker doing that with Perry. Yeah, Perry here, because I need a carer. She cares, so I don't really have to give a crap about. That, I can actually imagine Colin Baker's Doctor doing that. Now, then, of course, when we get to their second full-on seasons... Their doctors have been mellowed down. Colin Baker's doctor's performance has definitely mellowed down. Where Peter Capaldi's was mellowed down and turned into a bit of a comedy slash chameleon sort of thing in Series 9 and then Series 10. Absolutely fantastic. Now, the one thing about Capaldi and Colin Baker is that Capaldi got one more season where and a proper regeneration where Colin Baker just got one, like, one, like two seasons and not even a proper regeneration. Thank God for Big Finish, hallelujah, for doing Doctor Who, The Six Doctors' Last Adventure, which is there, which I've got on the shelf, as you can see. But the one thing about these two Doctors is, these two Doctors basically had, well, Colin Baker's only had, like, two companions, really, but he's had a ton load in Big Finish, including a shape-shifting shape alien penguin, where Capaldi's only travelled with Clara, Bill, Nardole. 
Now, if I was going to say what is out of all the companions that each of these doctors have, which ones do I find more better for their doctor? Now, for the 12th doctor, I absolutely love him, Bernardo. They are a fantastic duo, duo, like all through series 10. Series 10 is just phenomenal. I just love series 10. We've got some good moments with the 12th Doctor where he's there being a bit of an ass. He's like got some great moments as well. He's there like showing Bill the tires and stuff and he's there saying, I got to rewrite your memory. And she's like, what? He goes, go on, go, go before I change my mind. Go, 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 go before I change my mind. And then of course we go to Colin Baker and I really prefer him with Nicola Bryant than Bonnie Langford. Bonnie Langford, I think she works really well with Sylvester McCoy, where she doesn't really work well with Colin Baker during their two stories. They're a little bit in Big Finish, because them two have got loads of Big Finish audios together, which I'm still in the middle of listening to. Which, is like, The Juggernauts is one of my personal favourites. But I really think for TV-wise, I have to say, Colin Baker and Nicola Bryan are just a fantastic Tyler's team. The way them two, like, bicker, like, are, like, brother and sister, even though leading to the Sixth Doctor to strangle her in the twin dilemma. Sorry. That's something stuck in my throat there. Like, in the twin... Like, in the twin... Like, in the twin dilemma. Sorry, I couldn't get out there. I really hate the twin dilemma. Absolutely hate the twin dilemma. I can't say anything possibly nice about the twin dilemma. I have, I have tried to defend it to a few friends. And I'm just there going, they're like, I've had them asking me about the twin dilemma. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me. It's terrible. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not, it's, it's not terrible. It ain't terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> That's what I'm a bit like when somebody asks me how good is the twin dilemma. And I'm like, good. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like, good, good, good. Is the twin dilemma any good? Is the twin dilemma any good? Mm -hmm. I have to be honest, it's terrible. I've got the Target novel book, which I'm in the middle of reading the Abominable Snowman. There will be a review coming out on the Target novel book of the Abominable Snowman, so, and there will be a Target novel book after I've read that one, which it, I'm trying to read. I've literally got two Target novel books in the last two months, where for the beginning of April, I managed to get myself... The Twin Delimeter Comic Con. At Telford Comic Con. And then of course. Um, last week I got myself. The City of Death Target novel book. And I got two books as well. Uh, from my mum's. One of my mum's colleagues. Where she works. She, um, Dan he brought me two Doctor Who books. And I've still got to go and read them as well. I'm in the middle of reading the Target novel books. I'm listening to Big Finish. I'm not really watching Doctor at the moment. I'm either reading it or I'm listening to it. At the moment. But the thing is, though, Colin Baker as Doctor, for me, has some great moments. Like, I love his speech in Twilight Time Lord. If I could say anything about these two eras of the shows, they both have some great speeches. Like, with Colin Baker, who goes, In all my travels in the universe, my battles against evil, against power, mad conspirators, I should have stayed here. The oldest civilization was it degenerate and rotten to the core. Dalek, Santar, and Cybermen. That's the inertia compared to us. 10 billion years of absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. I absolutely love that speech for Colin Baker, which really means why Colin Baker is literally good. I love that speech. But with Pierre Capaldi doing his anti-war speech in the Saigon invasion, really beats Colin Baker's speech for Trial of the Time Lord. His, like, draw with his companions, Bernardo, I prefer that a lot over than Clara. Clara, I really think the Doctor just becomes her bitch. I, literally, I'm sorry to say that, but I really think she does become a bitch in specifically in Series 9 and Series 8. Like, the way she goes, I will smack you so hard, you will regenerate. That's the thing. I really think the Doctor does become Clara's bitch in Series 8 and 9. Thank God she left when she did. I think she was going a bit stale. But then, when we get to Series 10 for the Capaldi's era, and it's like a whole breath of fresh air. It's got some good stuff in it, like the return of the Ice Warriors and stuff. Now, the one thing about Colin's era is that he's got so many missing stories because of the all the original plans for, season, for the original Season 23 school got lost. Some have come out by Big Finish, which I've still got to listen to and try and track down. Like, I really want to get my hands on the Mag Magloss 2. Is it Magloss? Uh... Mission to Maglos, something like that, with the return of Seal and the Ice Warriors. I think that could be an really interesting one. But then, of course, these two Doctors, they do have so many They've both got a Davros slash Dalek episode. They've got Cybermen episodes. They've kind of got, like, the Masters in their eras in the two seasons of Connie Baker. The Master makes an appearance where 
for Peter Capaldi. He, the one thing about this one really doing this is because Capaldi has a bit of Colin Baker in his doctor in his doctor in series eight, and then I see in series ten, I kind of see series um John Pert his doctor in series ten in Capaldi's run, and then series nine, I kind of see like the serious bit that Tom Baker had in the comedy bits, like season six, uh, 15, 16, 17 for Tom Baker in Capaldi. I do see other bits of doctors, but for me, series eight Capaldi is very much like the eighth. Like the six in of the Doctor. Let me know in the comments what do you think of Colin Baker? Do you think who is your favourite out of this list? Who do you want to win this face off for you? Because my opinion, my winner is absolutely Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi is of course the winner for me for this face uh, for this face off. Stay tuned because there will be a third episode well, round three coming out soon, where the next two doctors is Patrick Triton. And Matt Smith. And then, of course, we have round four. So, that's, that's what I was going to say. There are 21 rounds so far. There will probably be more rounds with me matching doctors and see what I think of them. So, thank you for watching this video. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And join me for more awesome Doctor Who content. And let me know in your Doctor Who face-off in, in the comments below. Who wins for you? Is it Colin Baker or is it Peter Capaldi? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.